All right, Yeka, what do we have on the menu for today? So today we're going to be making a shepherd's pie, carnivore style, turkey pepperoni chips, chicken buns, egg noodles, and Italian herb meatballs. Delicious. I'm excited. Thanks. <laughs> Turned out good. Done. Okay, so what are we going to start with? So we are going to start with the pepperoni chips. They're really quick and easy. I have these uncured turkey pepperoni. Okay. Um, and we're going to bake them. We're going to set the oven to 350. Okay. okay. I have a silicone lined pan here. So you can put these on here and they don't have to be that far apart from each other because they don't expand or anything. The only thing is that they do get a little greasy. And if you want to, you can also put seasonings on here if you want to put some different flavors like garlic powder or some Italian herbs. Is there a lot of different brands you go with, Yucca, or is this kind of like your go-to? For pepperonis? Yeah. Yeah, this one's my go-to. I don't really eat too much pork. So these are the only people that offer a clean turkey pepperoni with no nitrates, no added sugar. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm lying. There is sugar in here. But I think there used to not be sugar in here. How could you? I know. I think they changed it because I don't normally buy stuff with cane sugar in it because I'm sensitive to it. Okay. Um, so well, mom I'm and I will take sure. care of that. <laughs> going to do the egg noodles next really easy we're just gonna put in some eggs whoa look at this egg <laughs> that's natural that's probably Sam's or Chris's yeah <laughs> that's awesome Not only huge, but it's I don't want to break this one. Shape. <laughs> yeah so this one is really easy it's just gonna be three eggs and a little bit of water and gelatin and you just blend it up and we're gonna bake it in the oven on a silicone tray and then we'll slice it up into noodles Tell there, there's nothing liquid anywhere. And so we'll pull these out, let them cool down. We're gonna pull them out and we're just gonna let them cool for a little while because they're, and that'll crisp them up. Next, we can do the shepherd's pie. Local ground beef here that we're gonna cook for our shepherd's pie. Now this, oh, this is a caveman cake. blend, so if that's okay, we could do that one or we have another one that should be thawed out that's just yeah. uh, grass fed. Um, Scottish Highland beef. So this is, they're both grass fed from the local farms. This has liver and heart in it. Okay, uh, this one might be good for the shepherd's pie, I yeah, think. Yeah, it sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna simmer it in this pan. About three quarters of this. Cool, so I'm gonna brown that a little bit and then I'm going to add some broth and salt to it. Cause I just want it kind of deep, like, cause if it, it might, uh, if it was in a pan, it might be a little too shallow. I'm about to separate some eggs for our topping and gravy. We'll put the yolks in here and the whites in here. And for a pound, three to four eggs is good. That's a duck egg, by the way. Okay, I was like, this does not feel like a chicken egg. That makes a lot more sense. <laughs> See how white, yellow go, the whites yeah. are? These pepperoni chips, I think they're gonna leave, need a few more minutes, so another five minutes. So if you've taken them out and they've cooled down and they're still soft, then just need to put them back in there for about four or five more minutes to make sure they crisp up. And you can add your favorite seasonings to this. You know, you can add some garlic, pepper, thyme, other fresh herbs or dry herbs. So I'm gonna add the yolks from from the eggs to the meat here, and it's going to make a thick gravy. It's going to thicken it up a little bit. So we'll stir them in there real quickly. This nice little sauce, and we'll just cook that down. You can also take out some of this broth and the meat, and you can also blend it if you want an even thicker gravy. So you would just pour some into a blender, blend it up, and then just mix it back into your meat mixture. Here I'm going to put our shepherd's pie make sure you can see that the sauce got really thick in there like a nice little gravy and so we'll just put that in here and next we're going to whip our egg whites for the topping three egg whites right here whipped egg whites you don't want it to have that stiff peak on there not really droopy or anything and we're just gonna spoon this on top and so this is 
supposed to be like the mashed potatoes that is typically on top of a shepherd's pie. So you don't want to smash it down because it'll it'll get all the air out. So you want to keep that air in there. The stew underneath. And you can really do this with any meat that you want. That's what they did back in the day. It usually, I believe it was a mix of lamb and beef. And so this, we'll put this in the oven just until the top is browned. About 10 minutes. Nice fluffy layer on top. Carnivore Shepherd's Pie. Here's the inside. And let's see what we can do. Do we need to cook the chicken? Yes. Okay, cool. We're gonna weigh out this chicken to see how much it is, and then we can see how many chicken buns we can make. This is a little over three ounces. So we are going to do about two eggs to three ounces of cooked chicken. Put this in here. And two eggs. And so for this, I'm gonna use just a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. You don't have to use it. I like to use it just because it gives it just a little bit of that airy bread-like texture to it. If you don't put it, it's just gonna be like, chicken and eggs. Maybe not. We are going to do our chicken buns on this silicone mat. You want the batter to be pretty thick. So we're gonna make two little chicken buns on here. And so what you do is you pretty much just put it in there, the shape that you want it. And you wanna make it a little bit thinner because it will puff up a tiny, tiny bit. So we'll put this in the oven. These take about eight minutes. So we are going to pull these chicken buns out again. They're so yellow, I love it. That's for the yolks? Yeah, it's from the yolks. Mm -hmm. And yeah, these hold really well. You can put your burger down and actually pick it back up and these will not fall apart. Nice. Which is even uncommon for regular gluten-free buns. So I just flopped these out. Really easy. And you can slice them to your desired thickness. also freeze really well. You can just put them in a glass container in the freezer and just pull them out whenever you want. They last for up to a week in the fridge um, and they're really good with some butter, some parmesan, and uh, later we'll put them on some meatballs. Let's put them with some meatballs. More noodles. <laughs> These are for sure done now. So now you can really tell that they're really brown. And these are good mostly for the day of. If you do want to keep them in an airtight container, they will get soft again. So if you're going to eat them another day, just you'll have to recrisp them in the oven for about five minutes or so. But these are really good for dipping. They're very sturdy, so you can use them for any any thick dip or anything like that. Um, but they're great and easy to make. And so I just add one egg. My seasonings. And a little bit of salt. One teaspoon per pound. And so I'm just going to mix this up. And that's really all I put in my meatballs. You can add crushed up pork rinds if you want or shredded Parmesan. I like to just keep it simple um, since I don't really eat too much pork. And I try to cut dairy out as much as possible so I don't add any of that extra stuff. 
And so for the meatballs, I divided it into half and then I divide those halves into quarters. And then each quarter I like to do, you can do three or four per quarter. And so I'm actually going to turn this up to 375. And once that gets hot, we'll put these in there for about 20 minutes. No breading or anything needed for meatballs because meatballs are literally just balls of meat. So we'll just put some of these meatballs on here. Make a little nest in the middle. And then we have some meatballs. And you can sprinkle a little Parmesan if you want on here or some garlic flakes. Um, or you can just put a little bit of sauteed butter if you want also, just to have a little sauce. Um, Voila. Voila. Spaghetti and meatballs. Here, I'm gonna, I wanna bite it. I don't wanna pop the whole thing in my mouth. It looks fabulous. How is it? Mmm. Delicious. Just egg yolks and, whole egg and herbs. A whole egg and herbs. Mm -hmm. I, I can taste the herbs. I like them. No breadcrumbs. So my question was She's talking to Yaka about Yaka's experience <laughs> on the carnivore. So on the, on the carnivore piece, are you uh, pretty hardcore as far as the quality of the meat that you're eating? For me, I am because even since before I was carnivore, I've always cared about the quality of right. food, organic produce. I always got organic produce, okay. um, always got organic locally sourced meat. I worked at the farmer's markets for a little over two years, okay. working with various local companies uh -huh. and you know, getting to meet the local ranchers and farmers. It just, you know, connects you so much right. more to your food. And then, you know, also learning about the regenerative, you know, aspect right. of it, how it actually is beneficial right. for the earth. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely always care about the quality of meat because for me, that's just been my personal choice for yeah. probably about five or six years now. So I know that Kurt has a lot of blood work done to, to check, you know, how the impacts of what he's eating on his body. Do you do that or do you just how, go by how you're feeling? I go by how I'm feeling. Okay. Yeah, I've just, I've kind of been like that for a long time. Um, and I know the benefits that I've gained from eating right. this way and I can feel it and see it in my right, body. Right, right, right. And so, you know, that's, to me, that's an extra expense that I don't really see that I need. Um, you know, I see, I see, I know that I'm healing. I know that I'm right. feeling better and I know other people have done, taken the tests. Right. You know, I see that it doesn't damage anybody. You know, yeah. there's no negative side effects, you know, for the most part. Right, 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 right. Um, and so for me, it, it is mostly just that I go by feeling. Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. you, well, did you know, Yuck is a certified carnival coach. So there's a coaching, uh, oh, oh, basically no, a, I didn't a certi that. certification organization now, Meet RX. Meet RX, And okay. she works with them and basically works with a lot of people who want to do the carnivore diet mm -hmm. and helps them do it like just kind of provides that a support system to kind of help them learn how to you know shop and figure all that stuff yeah out. or if they were if they were i've actually had a couple clients that have already been doing carnivore but they've just had some troubles like you know getting started right um, you know different there's different things sometimes it's not as easy as just eating meat and water for some people yeah yeah okay um so have you seen in the three years that you've been doing carnivore have you seen differences in the, in the carnivore community? I mean, as far as expanding, more people are, are receptive to it. Oh, yeah. what, what, what's been your experience on that it's, part? It's definitely growing. Uh, one thing that I've always noticed since first starting, because um, I was on like Facebook groups and stuff like that, okay. and that's where I got most of my research. I would just read through other people's success stories. And the one thing I love about the carnivore community is that it, that's exactly what it is like it's a community right and they're all there's always somebody there to help you like there if you ask anybody for advice you're going to get more than one person to help you out right, 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 right. with advice and support you um, and that's that's what I have loved so much about it um, and have noticed that it's it's a really strong community yeah. you know I've never seen any other group of people 
that you know just wants to lift other people up so much right, because super supportive. yeah because carnivore has healed people like crazy like i have you know i have a long list of things that carnivore has helped me heal and i just want other people to feel as good as you know as that it has helped me feel so for the things that you mentioned early on in our conversation as far as your own personal health issues when you first started carnivore that you started carnivore because of your own personal health issues to the time that you started noticing wow i'm feeling better what what was that are, i mean are we talking months are we talking days are we talking what are we what time frame are we talking so it does vary from person to person but for me personally um i would say it was probably about a month i did go through a transition period um but i was very familiar with like i was already aware that it was going to happen and i was familiar with it because i've done lots of detoxes right. so i'm really familiar with feeling like crap before you feel better right um and so i did go through a little transition period but then it was just like one day, I would say it was about a month or so in that I just woke up with this, like what they call zero carbs in. And you just like wake up and like everything is just awesome and you love everybody and you just want to give love to everybody. And I've only slept for six hours, but I feel like I've slept for nine and you know, and I have no slump during the day or anything like that. Um, and yeah, I, I remember that day. It just like, it was just like a switch just turned on and I was like, I'm gonna try this for, I was doing it only for 30 days, I was like, right. I'm gonna try this for another 30 days. And then I just kept adding 30 days until I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna uh, this is it, like, yeah, this is where I'm at. Okay, so you mentioned the um, the transition period. So I, I'd be interested what that's like, because I, I know or hear and understand a little bit, because I've tried it myself, the whole keto, the keto flu thing. Yeah. So what was the transition period like for you? Was for me, I was just extremely tired all day all okay. night i slept probably I, and i was also i think because of the depression i was sleeping like 12 hours a day some days nine to 12 hours was about how much i was sleeping okay. um and so i was sleeping a ton still during the transition period and that was mostly it i was just really tired and thirsty i didn't know so much about the electrolytes how your uh, body doesn't hold on to electrolytes with any low carb diet and so that's the one thing I would have done differently is supplement with, you know, some, some real salt or electrolytes. Yeah. Um, and I think that would have really helped a lot because I was drinking probably close to two gallons of water a day. And you still felt like you weren't getting enough? Yeah. I was so thirsty. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, you got to keep in mind, a lot of the carbs that you eat are coming in a process and they're loaded with sodium that's hidden. And so when you right. take all of that food out of your diet, right. yeah. you yeah. get none of that sodium right. that you right. Right. are used to getting. We're talking five grams, like a, you know, a mound of sodium that sometimes people just have to make sure they really add that. I, when I, I, I thought about the ancestral alignment of carnivore, and for me, I was like, why? Like, where are we getting salt in our diet ancestrally? Like, you know, and I've talked to Paul about this. Okay. And, and we're both, and Paul's like, we probably saw it out. It was this sort of, uh, you know, maybe it was in the environment, in the ocean, or in salt licks, or you know, rocks that we would capture. Exactly. And exactly. You, see, you yep. see animals in nature that do this. They right. go and risk. They seek it out. They risk like real danger to get salt. And right. so, uh, when I didn't, when I went, car when I was carnivore for a good year, and I backed off salt totally, and just kind of like, look, I'm just going to try no salt and see what happens. About a week in, I was waking up my legs were totally cramping like I just my whole body was like my muscles were cramping I just okay. I didn't have enough sodium that was balancing the potassium and the magnesium and the calcium in my body the body was really powerful at balancing all that yeah in, in a very tight window and so there's something there where you need to have a lot of sodium right. but you don't need to eat processed foods that are full of it you can eat a carnivore meal or whatever works for you and then make sure you just add it in yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so back to your story. Um, yeah, cause so you talked about waking up that one morning and feeling like the world is beautiful and <laughs> I haven't had enough sleep, but I feel fantastic. Um, so was that sustained then after that? I mean, is that is that kind of how you feel now that, that life is even keeled and you don't have any of those issues as far as the depression and yeah the definitely okay. yeah definitely and um like i was saying earlier the only time it does come back is if i do eat something that isn't carnivore right you know if i if i ate something around the holidays you know or, or right. tried something at a friend's house or at a restaurant or something like that um then i've noticed especially things with sweeteners even like oh. coconut sugar or honey 
if I eat something with too much of that in there, I can tell my depression starts to come back. Really? Yeah, and it's almost, it's either immediate or it's the next day. And the same thing with like chocolate, even 100% organic, yeah, pure yeah, yeah. chocolate, just by itself with no sweeteners or anything in it. Chocolate is like really damaging to me. It actually, so it makes me bloated. It makes all that debilitating joint pain come back. It kills my libido and it brings the depression back. And, and that's just from eating like a tiny amount of organic, fair trade, pure 100% cacao chips, like with no sweeteners that's or anything in it. Um, yeah, it's, it's so crazy. So for you, the impact is immediate. Yeah, it's either immediate or like a day, right. sometimes up to two days. Um, but yeah, I can, I'm can. i really sensitive and I can just really feel, um, especially when I've eaten something off track. Um, but it is sustained unless I eat something, you know, off track. Right. Or if I don't eat enough, you know, some days you're busy. Yeah. And eating, eating enough, I think, is really key on the carnivore diet. Because I've seen it with lots of people, including myself. If you don't eat enough during the day, you're going to get tired. You're going to get hangry. Right. You're going to have cravings. You know, you might have some inflammation come back. Um, and so, you know, if I don't eat enough, then I can start, I can tell, you know, I feel a little sluggish or off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you also mentioned weight loss. Can I ask how much weight you lost when I, you went? I lost 25 pounds. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you didn't do anything except just carnivore? I didn't do anything except carnivore. I've actually always hated working out my whole life. And so the fact that I saw this carnivore diet that was telling people don't work out, like we encourage you not to work out if it's not part of your regular routine. Yeah. You need to focus on healing your body first. That was like music to my ears, you know? I was right. like, oh my gosh, this it was is amazing. Feeling. Absolutely. Yeah, and then not only that, I also started gaining muscle in my arm. And I didn't really do any, like I worked at the farmer's market, but that was just okay. once a week. So You, you were know, physically like, active, but you were going to the gym. Right, yeah, like so I was a little bit physically active, but yeah. not really like, you know, purposely trying right, to gain right, weight. Right. And I noticed my muscles and my arms were getting bigger, and I wasn't working out or anything. Um, and then, oh, That's another one, too, is that I noticed I wasn't getting bit by mosquitoes anymore, which growing oh, up wow. my whole life, I used to get eaten up by mosquitoes like crazy, That's up to like hundreds of mosquito bites. and. Now, I don't know, I know, I think it's probably maybe just because there's no sugar in the blood that, you know, they're not attracted to it or anything like that. And I've heard that with other carnivores also. That's that funny, I don't, I, don't get, I don't get eaten by the same either. Some. Okay, so out yeah. of curiosity, both of you, um, what would be your guess of the size of the carnivore community here in Austin? Do you have a sense of it? She might, because you've done a couple meetups. Yeah, here in Austin, I would say it... Mm, Maybe like so I would say Austin and surrounding areas, mm -hmm. probably like thirty to fifty people. I would say okay. like okay. not. I haven't had the, those many people show up to my meetups, but I know there was one meetup where there was about 20, 20 or so people, and most of them were carnivore. Interesting. Um, and so yeah, I, I think Austin is a really good city, especially because it's like really big into keto already. Right. And so most people that have come to carnivore come from keto. And so do you know if you if you start start talking about the larger US how much interest is there in carnivore in other places do you have any sense of that at all um, I have no idea but I definitely know that it's growing yeah. um, especially because with everyone sharing their success stories and you so know someone shared yeah, yeah and so easily shared it's going to reach somebody else with the exact same story you know with a similar story and that person's gonna be like well I've tried all these other things like what's one more thing to try right, and that's right, what right. I thought that was my thought right before jumping in I was like Ah, I've tried all these other diets like what's trying one more for just 30 days you know if it's gonna change the rest of my life right, then right. 30 days is nothing so the big thing for you again was you suffered from depression mm -hmm. you have MS no no, no scoliosis. I have, uh -huh, scoliosis. Yeah, scoliosis mm -hmm. and you had the joint pain yeah mm -hmm. yeah when inflammation you went, when you, went and hard, mom, when you have a shoulder right yeah. issue that's just a nagging issue yeah. a lot of people uh, say joint pain goes away because it's a low inflammation diet mm -hmm. and that inflammation will subside and yeah. the body can kind of heal those areas uh, you know could be you know that plus what you're doing with the omega-3 right. can make a big combination of, of a one-two punch for that kind okay, of stuff well this weekend I'll go at least try three or four days <laughs> we'll since I'm here for three or four days <laughs> 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 I told Kurt I said Kurt look however you eat is how I'll eat except I did have to have my coffee this morning. <laughs> oh, that's fine. You do I have coffee, to have coffee. I, I can't do coffee. I do drink it sometimes, but I've noticed before I did carnivore that I I can't really do coffee too much. Much it uh, it just dehydrates me really bad and it causes me like stomach cramps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, even if it's like organic, like washed, you know, um, wash processed 
all that, but still, yeah. I can't do it. So the other thing, and I know, Kurt, you've commented on this. So the other piece is you never have experienced adverse intestinal reaction because of only being carnivore. No, not from meat. Uh, definitely not from meat. Um, if anything, it's from eating too much dairy. Then I'll, okay. I'll definitely get some bloat and, you know, maybe even a little inflammation. Um, but from eating meat and eggs, no. And when I first started, I was I was feeling best at two and a half pounds of meat. And I was eating... A day. A day, yeah. And I was eating uh, longhorn beef, which is really lean, and mm. pork chops and some eggs. And that's mostly what I was eating every day. So there you have it. All five recipes, carnivore keto. These diet recipes, they're going to help you dial in. We got to make some really great recipes. We got to learn. We got to just kind of play around with different ideas. So... If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. Let us know if you're, you know, if you've tried these recipes, if you have your own recipes, we'd love to hear that as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Go check out Yucca's stuff. We put the description down in the, the link below with her contact information, all that. And if you're new to my channel and you want to learn more about the carnivore diet, the link as well. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.